Humans have been making things out of copper longer than any other metal. Archaeological digs around the world have unearthed copper vessels, tools, weapons, and jewelry dating back at least 10,000 years. Fast forward to today, and copper is one mineral we still really dig. Peel back the layers of modern civilization, and there's a lot of copper. It's used for electrical motors and wiring, high-tech gadgetry and plumbing. The metal known chemically as CU is essential to modern living. Pure copper is rarely found in nature. It usually occurs with other elements like iron and sulfur. To mine the copper-bearing rock, a huge drill chews into this Arizona terrain. It drills around 130 holes at least 50 feet down. A truck pumps explosives into them. It's a powerful mix of ammonium nitrate and fuel oil. A mine worker lowers the electronic detonating devices into each of the 130 holes. From a safe distance away, he activates the detonators, staging the explosions milliseconds apart. It's an explosion sequence designed to fracture as much of the copper-bearing rock as possible. Shovels scoop up the blasted rock, lifting 55 to 88 tons in one bite. The rock is less than one half of 1% copper. Freeing the copper from it involves different techniques. The technique depends on whether the ore is iron oxide based or sulfide based. To process copper from oxide ore, they pile the rock in specially prepared leaching areas. They irrigate the rock with a diluted sulfuric acid solution. Over months, the solution percolates down and dissolves the copper. The copper solution drains into a pond. A pump transfers this solution to the plant. In this channel, the copper solution binds with an organic agent and floats to the top. They add an acidic solution that increases the concentration of the copper and makes it electrically conductive. They transfer the copper solution to a series of tanks that contain starter sheets of pure copper called cathodes. They pass an electrical current through the tank and the copper migrates to the cathodes. At the outset, the cathodes are wafer thin, but over a period of 10 days, they thicken substantially. They're now an inch thick. Each one weighs about 275 pounds. The purity is now 99.99%. That's important if the copper is to be processed into electrical products. Freeing copper from the sulfide rock is more difficult. It starts in a massive tumbler called a sag mill. Inside, steel grinding balls smash wet rock to pieces. Exiting the mill, the smashed rock travels over a perforated conveyor to screen out smaller pebble-sized rocks. These smaller rocks continue on to different grinding mills. The larger rocks circle back to the sag mill for another round. Once all the rock has been sufficiently ground, they add chemicals which coat the copper particles and mix in a frothing substance. The slurry flows into flotation tanks. Air blasts create bubbles that the chemically coated copper minerals attach to. The bubbles carry the minerals to the top of the tank and they overflow. After filtering the overflow, they have a concentrate that's now 25 to 30 percent copper. They transfer the concentrate by rail to a smelter facility. Here it goes into several large beds. Each one is the size of two basketball courts. They add silica sand, creating a layer cake of sand and copper concentrate. The silica sand is known as a flux. It will serve as a purifying agent as the concentrate is smelted. In the intense heat of the furnace, the silica sand melts to form a slag that absorbs the iron and other unwanted minerals. The slag floats up and the copper sinks. Its purity is now 60%. Then it's into a second furnace, where they up the copper content to 98%. Coming up, there's much more to the story of copper.